The statement of facts stated that government official one was a key decision maker in respect of government of Ghana aircraft orders and that payments to intermediary five by officials of Airbus were intended to induce or reward improper favor by government official one in respect of the purchase of three C-295 military transport aircraft. The referral also related that indeed, out of the 5 million euros promised to intermediary five, 3.8 million euros was paid between March 2012 and February 2014. Further, the referral indicated that similar conclusions had been reached by investigative and judicial authorities in the United States in the case of United States of America against Airbus SE. The referral requested that given the implications of the judgment, the OSP may collaborate with its United Kingdom and other foreign counterparts to conduct a prompt inquiry to determine the complicity or otherwise of any Ghanaian government official, past or present, involved in the scandal and to take the necessary legal action against such official as required by Ghanaian law. Now I go to the investigation and judicial pronouncements by the relevant foreign authorities because that sets the background for uh, my briefing today. On 31 January 2020, three courts, one each in the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and France, simultaneously delivered similar decisions containing agreed outcomes, variously described as consent agreement, deferred prosecution agreement, or judicial public interest agreements, depending on the jurisdiction, between Airbus SC and the relevant authorities in the three jurisdictions. The apparently coordinated judicial decisions imposed global financial sanctions in excess of 3.9 billion euros on Airbus. The agreed judicial decisions were the outcome of joint investigations carried out by the Serious Fraud Office of the United Kingdom and the French Parquet National Financier, PNF, and a parallel investigation conducted by the United States Department of Justice, DOJ, and the United States Department of State, DOS in respect of alleged bribery and corruption and violations of the United States International Traffic and Arms Regulations, ITAR, involving Airbus in Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Indonesia, China, Colombia, Nepal, South Korea, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, Russia, and Ghana. The alleged bribery offenses of Airbus in respect of Ghana was investigated by the SFO in the United Kingdom, while the DOJ in America investigated violations by Airbus of parts of the US ITAR in the context of the alleged bribery offenses in relation to Ghana. Therefore, as I said, the judicial decisions of the United Kingdom and the United States affected Ghana. Consequently, investigations carried out by the SFO and DOJ and the decisions of the two courts bear on the investigation by the OSP and thus require recourse and in some detail. Bear with me. This is important. First, the United Kingdom. It is well known that on 30, 31 January 2020, the President of the Queen's Bench Division, the Right Honorable Dame Victoria Sharp, sitting in the Crown Court at Southwark, delivered a final declaration and order in respect of a deferred prosecution ad agreement, DPA, between the SFO and Airbus in the case of Director of the Serious Fraud Office against Airbus. This was based on investigation conducted by the SFO in respect of Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, and Ghana, which was held to demonstrate that in order to increase sales, persons who performed services for and on behalf of Airbus offered, promised, or gave financial advantages to others intending to obtain or retain business, or an advantage in the conduct of business for Airbus, and that those financial advantages were intended to reward such improper performance, and further that Airbus did not prevent or have in place at the material times adequate procedures designed to prevent those persons associated with Airbus from carrying out such conduct. In respect of Ghana, Airbus was charged with the offense of failure of a commercial organization to prevent bribery, contrary to Section 7 of the Bribery Act 2010 of the UK. The particulars of offense stated that between 1 July 2011 and 1 June 2015, Airbus failed to prevent persons associated with Airbus from bribing others connected, concerned with the purchase of military transport aircraft 
by the government of Ghana, where the said bribery was intended to obtain or retain business or advantage in the conduct of business for Airbus. The accompanying statement of facts summarized by the SFO's position is that between 2009 and 2015, an Airbus defense company engaged Intermediary 5, who was stated as having no experience in the aviation sector, a national of the UK but born in Ghana, and a close relative of a high-ranking elected Ghanaian government official described as Government Official 1, as its business partner in respect of the proposed sale of three aircraft to the government of Ghana. A number of Airbus employees knew that Intermediary 5, who was a close relative of Government, of government Official 1, a key decision maker in respect of the sales. A number of Airbus employees made or promised success-based commission payments of approximately 5 million euros to Intermediary 5. False documentation were then created by or with the agreement of Airbus employees in order to support and disguise these payments. The payments were intended to induce or reward improper favor by government official one toward Airbus. Intermediary 5 was assisted in his work for Airbus by two other nationals of the UK, Intermediary 6, a good friend of Intermediary 5, and a UK television actor and film director, and Intermediary 7, a former UK television actor. Contact between Airbus and the government of Ghana about aircraft sales began in June 2009 following an expression of interest by the government of Ghana. By August 2009, employee 15 reported that he was in contact with government official 1 and his team. On 7 December 2009, Intermediaries 5 and 6 incorporated a company, Company D, in Ghana for this purpose. A company of the same name was incorporated in the UK in February 2010. Company D was a corporate vehicle through which Intermediary 5 and his associates provided services to Airbus. In December 2010, Airbus employee 16 was made aware that Intermediaries 5 and 6 were or had recently been working for government official one and or the government of Ghana. The Airbus campaigns in Ghana culminated in the sale of three C-295 military transport aircraft by Airbus to the government of Ghana. In respect of the first campaign for the aircraft, Airbus paid 3.9 million euros to a third party company, Intermediary 8, between March 2012 and February 2014. Intermediary 8, in turn paid 3.8 million euros to Company D. In respect of the second campaign for the sale of one C-295, Intermediary 5, or Company D, were promised approximately 1.6 million euros. The promised amount was not paid. From 2009, Intermediary 5 and its associates worked on the sales to the government of Ghana without any written consultant agreement. This included liaison with government official one regarding the potential Airbus 295 sale. Intermediaries 5 and 6 submitted a report to Airbus which documented a January 2011 meeting in London attended by themselves, government official 1, and Airbus at which the C-295 aircraft was agreed upon as the most suitable aircraft for the needs of the government of Ghana. By April 2011, Airbus employee 16 reported to his colleagues that the deal was close to being finalized. He then asked intermediaries five and six to transmit a letter to government official one and explain a possible delay. He also asked them to secure meetings with the Ghanaian Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Finance. On 18 May 2011, intermediary six emailed Airbus employee 16, stating that government official one had taken the relevant financials to the Minister of Finance and that intermediaries five and six were planning to go to Ghana within the next couple of weeks so they could oversee the project personally. Company D then submitted a formal business partner application to Airbus in May 2011. On 8 July 2011, intermediary 6 sent Airbus employee 15 a company update. He reported that he had just returned from Ghana, quote, having had very productive meetings with all parties, including government official one, the Ministry of Defense, a Minister of Finance, end quote. The email stated that the C-295 sale was agreed at all levels and was expected to clear Parliament by 14 July 2011. 
and that government official one had expressed an interest in buying two more C-295s. On 3 August 2011, Airbus Spanish Defense subsidiary and the government of Ghana signed a purchase agreement for the sale of the C-29 aircraft. The following day, Airbus employee 17 declared to the Spanish Export Credit Agency that no more than 3 million euros would be paid to business partners in connection with this contract. Although no payments had actually been made yet, this figure broadly reflected a 5% commission on the sale of the aircraft. The same document also declared compliance with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD Convention on Combating Bribery of, of Foreign Public Officials in International Business Transactions. Following the May 2011 business partner application, Airbus commissioned an external due diligence report on Company D. A resulting report dated 30 September 2011 identified Intermediary 5 as a shareholder of Company D and the possibility that he was a close relative of government official 1. The source of the information was a UK newspaper article quoting Intermediary 6. The Airbus external due diligence report raised concerns that there was a risk of non-conformity with the OECD convention. Faced with this concern and a stated fear that the failure of the Company D application portended the prevention of Airbus from doing business in Ghana for a number of years, relevant Airbus employees agreed to and did substitute Company D with a Spanish company intermediary 8, which was, pre, which was a pre-existing Airbus business partner. By deliberately circumventing the proper compliance process by falsely representing that the work in respect of the first campaign had been done by Intermediary 8, which could then in turn make the money available to Intermediary 5 and others. On 9th March 2012, Airbus Employee 1 and Airbus Employee 22 approved the Intermediary 8 business partner application for the first campaign of the sale of the C-295 military aircraft to Ghana. The consultant agreement between Intermediary 8 and Airbus was dated 20 March 2012 and with an effective date of 1 January 2010. The agreement provided for a percentage commission fee of the net total amount received by Airbus by virtue of any commercial contract with the government of Ghana for the C-295 aircraft. As indicated earlier, between March 2012 and February 2014, Airbus paid 3.9 million euros to Intermediary 8, which in turn paid 3.8 million euros to Company D and retained about 60,000 euros. By the time of the second campaign, the March 2012 Intermediary 8 Consultant Agreement had expired. A request on 24 February 2014 by Airbus Employee 21 and Airbus Employee 15 for the extension of the expired agreement was refused on 9 March 2014 by Airbus Employee 20, who advised that a new agreement would have to be signed. Extensive discussions via email were held by relevant Airbus employees and Intermediary 5 on the urgency to carry the deal forward since it had stalled. Government official one was blind copied in some of the emails from the relevant Airbus employees to Intermediary 5. Intermediary 5 assured Airbus employee 16 on 14 October 2014 that he had spoken with government official one who had expressed that there will be movement on the transaction. A draft business partner application in the name of Intermediary 8 was created in February 2015 and a request for payment presented to the Airbus Liquidation Committee in April 2015. However, the Liquidation Committee requested further due diligence before payments could be concluded. Intermediary 8 declined to participate in an interview and accordingly failed the due diligence exercise. Airbus did not enter into a written contract or make any commission payment in respect of the second campaign. Correspondence from Intermediary 5 to Airbus claimed that he was owed 1.6 million euros. Airbus disputed the claim by Intermediary 5. No proceedings have been instituted by F Intermediary 5 or Company D. The UK authorities and Airbus agreed on the foregoing as the established facts. In brief, Airbus failed to prevent persons associated with it from bribing others concerned with the purchase of military transport aircraft by the government of Ghana, where the said bribery was intended to obtain or retain business or advantage in the conduct of business for Airbus, and that a number of Airbus employees 
agreed to deliberately circumvent the proper compliance process by falsely representing that the work in the first campaign had been done by Intermediary 8, which could in turn make the money available to Intermediary 5 and others. Further, the sum paid to Intermediary 8 by Airbus and then by Intermediary 8 to Intermediary 5 exceed, in the latter case, by about 850,000 euros the agreed commission amount set out in the declaration of compliance by Airbus to the Spanish Export Credit Agency. Now to the United States. It is also well known that on 31 January 2020, the United States District Court for the District of Columbia reached similar conclusions by way of a deferred prosecution agreement, DPA, or a consent agreement in the case of United States of America versus Airbus. In relation to Ghana, the DPA posited that Airbus willfully concealed its political contributions, fees, and commissions paid to business partners in conjunction with the sale or transfer of defense articles and defense services in violation of the U.S. ITAR, which I referred to earlier. This was because certain ITAR controlled defense articles from the U.S. suppliers were components of the C-29 aircraft which was being manufactured for Ghana. These components were exported from the U.S. to Spain for the manufacture of the C-295 for onward transmission to Ghana. And that Airbus repeatedly filed re-export license applications that the U.S. authorities relating to the two C-95s that, that included false or incomplete certifications related to the U.S. ITAR. The DPA stated that between 2009 and 2016, Individual 1, a citizen of Ghana, was a high-ranking elected government official in Ghana during the relevant ITAR time period. And that beginning in on around 2009, a few months after Individual 1 took office, Individual 1 was in direct and repeated contact with senior Airbus executives from both the Defense and Space Division and SMO International, one of Airbus entities responsible for reviewing the use of business partners and payments to third parties about Airbus sales campaigns. Individual One was influential in having the government of Ghana approve aircraft purchases, and Individual One contacted Airbus senior executives during the government's approval process. In 2011, during Individual One's time in office, the Ghanaian parliament approved the purchase of two C-295 aircraft. In connection with the sales to Ghana, beginning on or about 1 January 2009, the Defense and Space Division's Spanish subsidiary contracted with Individual One's brother, Consultant 4, a citizen of Ghana and the UK, to act as a third-party consultant for Airbus during the C-295 sales campaigns. Airbus purposefully sought to engage Consultant 4 due to his closeness to Individual One, and Airbus management consulted Consultant 4 in their communications with Individual One. Airbus used Consultant 4 as a conduit for messages intended for Individual 1, and Consultant 4 traded on its access to Individual 1. Consultant 5, a citizen of the UK, worked in conjunction with Consultant 4 to assist in the sale. Consultant 4 and Consultant 5 initially were engaged by Airbus without any written business partner agreement and without Airbus completing due diligence. Airbus initially agreed to pay Consultant 4 through a company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5 in excess of 3.5 million euros. Airbus worked with Consultant 4 and Consultant 5 for two years before submitting a business partner application to Airbus compliance staff. In October 2011, Airbus compliance staff rejected the proposed contract between Airbus and Consultant 4 and Consultant 5's company because Consultant 4 had a familial relationship to Individual 1. Specifically, Airbus compliance found staff found that the, sh the shareholders of this company are so close to the decision makers. Thereafter, due to the scrutiny of using Consultant 4 as a business partner, senior leadership in SMO International and the Defense and Space Division of Airbus concocted a plan to deliberately circumvent Airbus compliance rules Specifically, the Airbus executives proposed to pay Consultant 4 via Organization 1, a Spanish-based third-party business partner of Airbus 
previously used on other Defense and Space Division campaigns. Organization 1 was already in good standing with SMO International. However, it had no prior affiliation with Consultant 4 or Consultant 5. Airbus used Organization 1 solely as a pass-through entity to obscure the involvement of Consultant 4 in sales transactions. Organization 1 did not undertake any party, any third party business activity in Ghana in connection with the 2011 campaign to sell two C295s to the government of Ghana. Under this scheme, on 20 March 2012, Airbus entered into a contract with Organization 1 to provide business partner services to, to the C295 Ghana campaign. Although the agreement was signed on 20 March 2021, it stated that the effective date for the contract was 1 January 2010. The agreement was signed by Airbus Defense and Space Management and it noted that Organization 1's operational address was in Ghana, despite the fact that Organization 1 was a Spanish company operating in Spain. Under the agreement, Organization 1 will be provided a success fee for the C295 aircraft sale. The success fee was calculated to be approximately 3 million euros, a similar amount that had been promised to Consultant 4 which was 3.5 million euros. Pursuant to the agreement, between March 2012 and February 2014, Airbus paid in excess of 3.5 million euros to Organization 1 in Spain. The payments were authorized by SMO International. <coughs> Thereafter, Organization 1 transferred money to the account of the company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5. Organization 1 took a percentage of the money prior to the transfer. In total, the company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5 was paid in excess of 1.8 million euros in May 2012, relating to the 2011 sale of two C295 to Ghana. Consultant 4 later claimed 71,000 euros was still owed to him related to the sale. In February 2014, Airbus management at SMO International and the Defense and Space Division sought to extend Airbus's contract with Organization 1, related to a subsequent campaign to sell C-295 aircraft to Ghana. Airbus compliance staff rejected the extension request and required that a new contract be signed. In March 2015, a request was submitted for Organization 1 to be paid 1.6 million euros for the sale of one C-295 aircraft to Ghana. Consultant 4 was subsequently Consultant 4 subsequently demanded from both Airbus and Organization 1 payment of 1.6 million euros in connection with the 2015 C295 sale. Additionally, on or about 28 March 2012, Airbus made political contributions in the amount of 62,000 euros to a Spanish foundation related to agricultural development in Ghana. This contribution was not initially disclosed to the U.S. authorities. Airbus subsequently disclosed it out of abundance of caution. No direct link yet has been established between those political contributions and the relevant C-295 sales has been identified to date. Airbus also accepted that the facts were established beyond reasonable doubt and that the facts took place during the relevant time frame. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, this is a contest that was placed for us in respect of the investigation of the OSP. Now, the OSP investigation. Notwithstanding the definitive pronouncements by the UK and the US courts on the accepted culpability of Airbus, beyond reasonable doubt, for bribery in relation to the sale to Ghana of C-295 aircraft, it was imperative that criminal investigations be carried out by relevant Ghanaian authorities for several reasons. First. Relevant investigative authorities in Ghana did not participate in the investigation in relation to the acts that refer to Ghana. It was carried out by the SFO of the UK and the DOJ of the United States. So the President's 2 February 2020 referral to the OSP is a testament that Ghana officially became aware of the global investigation into the conduct of Airbus by the SFO, DOJ and the DOS and the French uh, PNF af after the fact and after the coordinated 31 January 2020 judicial pronouncements. That is to say, by the time Ghana came in, the, investigation, the global investigations had already been concluded. 
Also, the UK and US judicial decisions only establish criminal culpability in the context of the laws of the two jurisdictions. It does not automatically follow that the acts accepted as proved beyond reasonable doubt in the UK and the US amount to criminal offenses in Ghana. To rely solely on the UK and US decisions without more as proof of criminal culpability will be akin to seeking to enforce the criminal laws of the UK and US in Ghana, which is impermissible. Therefore, the UK and US court decisions cannot of themselves be the only index of proof of criminality in Ghana. That is to say, the Republic cannot hope to successfully mount criminal prosecutions solely on the back of the two foreign court decisions. It has to be shown, beyond reasonable doubt, that the acts amount to criminal offenses in Ghana. Then again, the above detailed account of the outcome of the investigations and court decisions in the UK and US shows that the deferred prosecution agreements did not include or cover the, the referenced individuals. The agreed settlements were reached by the UK and US authorities with Airbus only. Indeed, the UK court stated in paragraph 6 of its judgment that, quote, the DPS provided a mechanism by which an organization, being a body corporate, a partnership, or an incorporated association, but not an individual, can avoid prosecution for certain economic offenses through an agreement with the prosecution authority, end quote. Similarly, the US DPA regime provides no protection against prosecution of any individual, regardless of the affiliation with Airbus. On this call, it seems that Airbus accepted criminal culpability for bribery for itself, and also vicariously on behalf of the reference individuals, including its employees, agents, business partners, and Ghanaian public officials, and that the reference individuals appear not to have been direct subjects of the investigations by the UK and US authorities, and were not afforded the opportunity if they were so minded to take it, to explain their actions and to present exculpatory evidence if they had any. Further, from all that I've stated prior, it is obvious that the identity of the reference individuals was not disclosed in both the UK and U US outcomes and court decisions. The UK court explained the reason why it redacted the identity of the reference individuals to the effect that there were ongoing investigations in respect of a number of individual suspects in the UK and outside UK. Thus, it was appropriate to protect the rights of the suspects to a fair trial. In addition, some of the individuals involved in the relevant conduct were based in jurisdictions where there were human rights concerns and the death penalty existed for corruption. Further, intermediary companies used by Airbus were often made up of a few individuals. Therefore, naming the companies will therefore be tantamount to naming those individuals. Consequently, it was prudent not to prejudice potential criminal proceedings and revelation that could potentially lead to action or the imposition of a penalty which will be regarded as contravening Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which prohibits torture and inhuman or degrading, degrading treatment or punishment. Therefore, it is compelling that investigations be carried out by relevant Ghanaian authorities to ascertain the identity of the reference individuals as direct subjects of the investigation for closer scrutiny of their actions and to determine whether the acts committed in Ghana amount to criminal offenses in Ghana and whether the acts committed outside Ghana would amount to criminal offenses in Ghana if they were committed in Ghana. Therefore, the special prosecutor, upon determining that allegations of bribery are within the mandate of the OSP and that the referral and the judgments of the UK and US courts raise reasonable suspicion of the commission of corruption and corruption-related offenses of bribery of public officers and the use of public office by public officers for private profit, authorize the commencement of plenary investigation into the matter in accordance with the laws governing the operations of the OSP. The investigation was commenced by the OSP in February 2020. I wasn't the special prosecutor at the time, you know that. But it was concluded in June 2024 when I was the special prosecutor. So from February 
2020 to June 2024. The investigation focused on the individual described as government official one by the UK court and described as individual one by the US court. The individual described as intermediary five by the UK court and described by the US court as consultant four. The individual described as intermediary six by the UK court and consultant five by the US court. The individual described as intermediary seven by the UK court. The company described as company D by the UK court and by the US court as the company owned by consultant four and consultant five. And another individual associated with the individual described as intermediary five by the UK court and consultant four by the US court. Other individuals who are Ghanaian public officials and politically exposed persons. On 7 February 2020, a special prosecutor triggered the mutual legal assistance process under the Mutual Legal Assistance Act 2010, Act 807, which governs mutual legal assistance in respect of criminal matters under an agreement or other arrangement between Ghana and a foreign state or a foreign entity. The special prosecutor's request channeled through the Central Authority in Ghana under Act 807 for onward transmission to relevant authorities in the UK and US, in particular the SFO and the DOJ, was designed to obtain admissible evidence relating to the allegations of bribery of Ghanaian officials in the C-295 aircraft purchase from Airbus and the establishment of whether any proceeds of the corruption and corruption-related offenses were transferred to Ghanaian officials. The mutual legal assistance process continued well into 2023 when I was a special prosecutor. The UK authorities paused the process between 10 February 2021 and 20 December 2021, pending the outcome of an ongoing UK investigation. The OSP established, through independent inquiry, the identity of the subjects of the investigation. Though the UK and US courts muffled their identities, we deem it necessary to reveal the identity of some of the individuals owing to the very heightened public interest in the fact that the conduct of Airbus was held by the UK and US courts to be aimed at courting on due favor and advantage from Ghanaian public officials and an elected high government official in the sale of C-29 aircraft to Ghana and the persons held to be closely associated with or the conduit of the courting of such undue favor and advantage. And also, in light of the occurrences in the context of the investigative and prosecutorial actions of the Ghanaian and UK authorities in the past four and a half years. So, the OSP confirms the identity of the following individuals. Government Official 1. Individual described as Government Official 1 by the UK court and individual one by the U.S. court is John Dramani Mahama. He is a citizen of Ghana. He was the vice president of Ghana from 7 January 2009 to 24 July 2012. He was the president of Ghana from 24 July 2012 to 7 January 2017. His tenure of office as the vice president of Ghana coincided with the time frame of the U.K. and U.S. investigation of the first Airbus campaign for the sale of two C-295 aircraft to Ghana. His term of office as a president of Ghana occurred during the UK and US investigation time frame of the second Airbus campaign for the sale of one C-29 aircraft to Ghana. Intermediary five, consultant four. The individual described as intermediary five by the UK court and consultant four by the US court is known both as Samuel Adam Mahama and Samuel Adam Foster. He is a UK citizen and also a citizen of Ghana. He is a younger brother of the full blood of John Dramani Mahama, former president of Ghana, referred to above. His birth name is actually Samuel Adam Mahama. But he was adopted from Ghana and taken to the UK in 1972 by a British missionary couple. He assumed the last name of his adopted parents, Foster, at age nine. He lost touch with his Ghanaian family until 1997. Intermediary six, 
consultant five. The individual described as intermediary six by the UK court and consultant five by the US court is Philip Sean Middlemiss. He is a UK citizen. He is an English television and radio actor and businessman. He is a close friend of Samuel Adam Foster, otherwise known as Samuel Adam Mahama. Intermediary seven. The individual described as intermediary seven by the UK court is Leanne Sarah Davis. She is a UK citizen. She is a partner to Philip Shaw Middlemans, referred to above. On 30 April 2020, the OSP requested the assistance of Interpol for the issuance of a red notice for the apprehension of Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Ferno, the spouse of Samuel Adam Foster. The red notice was published by Interpol on 10 July 2020. On 13 May 2020, the OSP sought and obtained warrants from the circuit court Accra for the arrest of Samuel Adam Foster, Sean, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Ferno. In the general scheme of affairs, the Interpol Red Notice of itself is not an arrest warrant, and it is insufficient to secure the presence in Ghana of the non-resident subjects of the investigation without an accompanying request for extradition. The OSP is not a body mandated by law to request the extradition of suspects from foreign jurisdictions to the Republic. Thus, we could only rely on the agencies mandated by law so to do. In July 2020, the OSP sought, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration and the Ghana High Commission in the UK, the voluntary return to Ghana of Samuel Adam Foster otherwise known as Samuel Adam Mahama, for interviewing by the OSP, since he is a citizen of Ghana, apart from the fact that he is also a citizen of the UK. But his efforts were unsuccessful. There was a pause in the investigation between November 2020 and July 2021, where there was no substantive special prosecutor. The investigation resumed in August 2021, after my assumption to office. By July 2022, it had become obvious that the mutual legal assistance process was yielding precious little. The OSP interviewed former President John Dramani Mahama on 5 January 2024 in Accra. On its own, the OSP located and interviewed Samuel Adam Foster, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Ferno outside Ghana in March 2024 in the presence of their council. Don't ask me where and how we found them. I'll tell you. <laughs> now, to our observations. The OSP's mutual legal assistance requested from the UK and US authorities placed the OSP in a position no better than any person who read the DPS and the decisions of the UK and US courts on the Airbus matter. It was not a lack of industry or want of trying on the part of the OSP. In the end, the OSP had to conduct the investigation on its own without any real help. However, the DPS and the decisions of the UK and UK courts served as a vital foundation for the OSP investigation. After all, the President's referral to the OSP was on, the back, was on the back of the DPS and the judicial pronouncements. Therefore, the OSP investigative outcomes are substantially similar to that of the SFO of the United Kingdom and the DOJ of the United States. Our investigation shows, as captured in the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements, that Airbus indeed completed two sale campaigns in Ghana in respect of C-295 twin turboprop military transport aircraft manufactured in Spain by a subsidiary of Airbus. The campaigns resulted in the sale of three C-295s. The first contract between Ghana and Airbus was signed on 3 August 2011 for the sale of two of the aircraft, and the second contract 
was signed on 5 March 2015 for 1C295. The three aircraft were delivered to Ghana on 17 November 2011, 19 March 2012, and 4 December 2015, respectively. That is to say, they were actually delivered. The OSP investigation also shows that in the general scheme of affairs, the acquisition of operational assets by the Air Force is driven by national and operational requirements. So when a need is identified, the Air Force Command develops a technical paper upon which providers are requested to make presentations on technical details, logistics support, and cost. If a provider meets the requirements, a formal contract in the form of a sales and purchase agreement are drafted by the provider for the consideration of the Air Force. Thereafter, stakeholder meetings are held among representatives of the Air Force, Attorney General's Department, Department of Legal Services of the Ministry of Defense, the Judge Advocate General's Office, and the provider, all aimed at arriving at a consensus on outstanding issues and conflicting positions and resulting amendments to the draft agreement. Thereafter, the agreement is submitted to the Ministry of Defense for cabinet and parliamentary approvals. The Air Force then constitutes a compliance team to work closely with the provider to ensure that the delivered item meets the agreed specifications. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, the processes leading to the purchase by the government of Ghana of three C-295 twin turboprop military transport aircraft from Airbus followed substantially the same pattern. Parliament approved the proposed transactions in 2011. In accordance with the laws of Ghana, in the estimation of the OSP, there was nothing remarkable about the deal and it certainly will not have found its way in the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements and made headlines around the world, but for the involvement of former President John Dramani Mahama and his younger brother of the full blood, Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, and his associates, as recounted in the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements. The OSP investigation found no evidence that former President Mahama was involved or played any role in the procurement and maintenance of the agency relationship between Airbus and Foster and its associates in respect of the purchase by the government of Ghana of military transport aircraft from Airbus. And it appears to the OSP that the direct communications and meetings between former President Mahama and officials of Airbus to close the deal were actuated by good intentions on the part of the former president. It also appears that Foster and his associates became involved as intermediaries in the Airbus Ghana deal after the decision by the government of Ghana in preference of the C-295 aircraft. Therefore, it seems that Foster's Airbus intermediary role at the time his brother served as the vice president of Ghana was a case of luckless coincidence that attracted the disapproval of the UK and US authorities. The OSP found no evidence that suggests that the involvement of Foster as an intermediary of Airbus and the direct communications and meetings between former President Mahama and officials of Airbus to close the deal between Airbus and the government of Ghana amounted to any corruption and corrupted relation, corruption related offense in respect of which the OSP has a mandate. However, it ought reasonably to have occurred to former President Mahama and the government of Ghana that the familiar relationship between former President Mahama and Foster and the direct participation by former President Mahama in the communications and meetings with Airbus officials were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings, notwithstanding any claims to good faith conduct and above board dealings, especially in light of the fact that during the first Airbus campaign, former President Mahama was the chairman of the Armed Forces Council by reason of his position as a vice president and therefore a very key decision maker. Such close proximity dealings by such elected high officials of the Republic and their kin and close associates on behalf of the Republic should neither be viewed favorably favorably nor encouraged, as they give rise to reasonable suspicion of influence peddling and conflict of interest, 
never mind any intended good faith on the part of the vice president or the president. Then again, the direct participation of the president and the vice president on behalf of the republic in commercial communications and meetings with commercial entities should not be encouraged either, as they expose these elected high officials to the specter of the slightest hint of perceived corruption that may attend international business transactions. The president and the vice president should be insulated from such direct commercial dealings. Indeed, it seems to the OSP that the only reasons why the Airbus Ghana deal found its way into the UK and US DPAs were the fact that former President Mahama and Samuel Adam Foster were brothers of the full blood, and that former President Mahama directly participated in commercial communications and meetings with Airbus officials. This is because, and here, without seeking to critique the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements, the OSP found no evidence, circumstantial or direct, which suggests that Foster and his associates were actually paid bribes, and which bribes were to be transmitted to former President Mahama, and that the bribes were actually paid to former President Mahama. Indeed, to all intents and purposes, and objectively viewed, an agency relationship existed between Airbus and Foster and his associates, by which Foster and his associates acted as business partners of Airbus in respect of the Airbus Ghana deal, and under which Foster and his associates were to be remunerated success based commission payments. I'm a quiet woman, so I expect that. This was a typical arrangement instituted by Airbus, by which it contracted third parties as business partners to increase its international footprint and to assist it in winning sales contracts in numerous jurisdictions. On this basis, when Airbus made a successful sale of aircraft, it will ordinarily pay a business partner a commission-based percentage value of the sale or a fixed amount of the aircraft. In this contest, Airbus took the full benefit of the agency agreement with Foster and his associates and the services they provided to Airbus for a considerable length of time. This was so because the contract for the sale of the first 295s between Airbus and Ghana, which was clearly secured by Foster and his associates, was signed almost two months before Airbus issued its due diligence report on 30 September 2011, which led to the abrogation of the arrangement between Airbus and Foster and his associates. It was only when Airbus' due diligence mechanism discovered the familiar relationship between former President Mahama and Foster that it abrogated the relationship. The abrogation by Airbus of the agency arrangement certainly portended to work and did in fact work grave unfairness against Foster and his associates. Therefore, the concoction of a plan by senior leadership in SMO International and the Defense and Space Division of Airbus to deliberately circumvent Airbus compliance rules by substituting Company D, or the company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5, with the Spanish Intermediary 8 organi Organization 1, to ensure payments to Foster and his associates was probably a well-intentioned adventure, though apparently misguided, as it rendered the payments seemingly of doubtful provenance. Whose phone is this? Your girlfriend is calling. It also appears to the OSP that the relationship between Airbus and Foster and his associates was, an, was neither one of nor peculiar to the Airbus Ghana deal. Airbus had in place similar business partnership models with Foster and his associates in respect of business promotion in other African countries before the Airbus Ghana transaction. As we stated above, the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements did not include and cover the reference individuals. The agreed settlements were reached by the UK and US authorities with Airbus only. And it appears that Airbus accepted criminal culpability for bribery for itself, and also vicariously on behalf of the reference individuals, including its employees, agents, business partners, and Ghanaian public officials. And that the reference individuals appeared not to have been direct subjects of the investigation by the UK and US authorities, 
and were not afforded the opportunity, if they were so minded to take it, to explain their actions and to present exculpatory evidence, if any. The OSP is unaware of any such analogous proceedings of, or framework in Ghana by which an entity could vicariously accept wholesale criminal responsibility on behalf of another, especially where that other was not a direct subject of the investigation and was available to answer for himself, but was not afforded the opportunity to do so and to present any exculpatory evidence he may have. Though the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements were emphatic that Airbus failed to prevent persons associated with it from bribing others concerned with the purchase of military transport aircraft by the government of Ghana, and that the bribes were intended to obtain or retain business or advantage in the conduct of business for Airbus, and further that the payments were intended to induce or reward improper favor by former President John Dramani Mahama toward Airbus. The conclusions by the UK and US authorities appear to be solely from the perspective of Airbus and what Airbus perceived as the real intentions of its employees in their dealings with their intermediaries and the government of Ghana. The OSB does not question the conclusions of the UK and US authorities. This is so, especially as the OSP is not privy to the raw body of evidence available to the UK and US authorities, apart from the content of the DPAs, which you may have all read. However, it seems to us that the nature and structure of Ghana's statutory prohibitions and our jurisprudence on corruption and corruption-related offenses do not lend themselves to founding criminal culpability in respect of the reference individuals in the context of the UK and US outcomes. It seems to us that since the reference individuals were not represented during the UK and US investigations, it became a case of whatever characterization Airbus plays on their conduct in relation to the actions of the employees of Airbus. It is also obvious that Airbus did not represent and had no intention of representing the interest of the reference individuals. It appears to us that the sole aim of Airbus was to save its image and reputation, never mind what it did to the image and reputation of the reference individuals, and to pay fines to avoid prosecution. Therefore, by reconstructing the entirety of Airbus dealings in Ghana, and through its intermediaries and with Ghanaian public officials, the OSP, looking at it from both the perspective of the officials of Airbus and that of the Airbus intermediaries and Ghanaian public officials, it seems to us that what Airbus perceived and accepted in the deferred prosecution agreements as the real intentions of its employees in their dealings with the, with the intermediaries and Ghanaian public officials is at cross purposes with what appeared to be the real intentions and expectations of the intermediaries and the Ghanaian public officials in their dealings with the employees of Airbus. This is what I'm saying. While the accepted facts in the two foreign jurisdictions are that the employees of Airbus designed the payments to the intermediaries as bribes intended to court favor with Ghanaian public officials, especially as President John Dramani Mahama. On the other hand, the intermediaries appeared to expect and receive the payments as their legitimate expectation under an arrangement of success-based commissions for the sale of the military transport aircraft to the government of Ghana. Ghana and their actions, in whichever way viewed, were calculated as businessmen expecting their lawful paychecks and not as conduits of a bribery scheme. The concoction of a plan by senior leadership in SMO International and the Defense and Space Division of Airbus to deliberately circumvent Airbus compliance rules by substituting Company D, or the company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5, with Spanish Intermediary 8, or Organization 1, to ensure payments to Foster and his associates, though wrongful and deceptive, was entirely an internal matter for Airbus in respect of its disciplinary regulations and code of ethics. It does not amount to the payment of bribes to court favor with Ghanaian public officials in the reckoning of Ghanaian law. It is a case of the employees of Airbus deceiving 
Airbus. Neither does the short declaration by Airbus to the Spanish Export Credit Agency and Airbus's non-declaration in the context of the US AT ITAR. Consequently, the OSP has no evidentiary basis upon which to conclude that Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Medelmis, and Leanne Sarah Davis acted as conduits of bribery between the employees of Airbus and former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official. Also, the OSP found no evidentiary basis that suggests that Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Medelmis, and Leanne Sarah Davis received payments from Airbus with the intention of bribing former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official. Further, the OSP found no evidentiary basis that suggests that former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official was paid bribes by Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Middlemiss, and Leanne Sarah Davis in respect of the purchase by the government of Ghana of military transport aircraft from Airbus. Then again, the OSP found no evidentiary basis that suggests that former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official was induced to improperly favor or did improperly favor Airbus in respect of the purchase by the government of Ghana or military transport aircraft from Airbus. In the case of Sarah Ferno, she should not even have been a subject of the OSP investigation. Members of the media, the OSP has cited and notes that by two separate communications, both dated 22 April 2021, the SFO in the United Kingdom notified Samuel Adam Foster and Philip Sean Middlemiss that a decision had been taken not to prosecute them for any offense in respect of the Airbus Ghana deal. It has not come to the notice of the OSP that the SFO in the UK has reconsidered its decision. We consider it that it ties with our conclusion. Further action. A special prosecutor has directed the closure of the OSP investigation into alleged bribery of high-ranking Ghanaian officials by Airbus SE through intermediaries in respect of the sale of military transport aircraft by Airbus SE to the Republic of Ghana between 2009 and 2015. The OSP will not institute criminal proceedings against any person in respect of this investigation. The Special Prosecutor has also directed authorized officers of the OSP to rescind the 13 May 2020 warrants of arrest obtained from the Circuit Court Accra for the arrest of Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Ferno. Earlier today, I sent out correspondence notifying Interpol of the withdrawal of the red notices in respect of Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Ferno. Thank you for your kind coverage.